Okay, so in this problem, we have a little bit of a conundrum here. We're trying to lay cable so that we can go from point A to the island point B. And we know that it's more expensive to go across the water than it is to stay on shore, but we can't stay on the shore forever because we eventually have to get over to the island. So take a moment, read the problem if you want to pause the video because we're going to get right into it. Um, look at this problem. So there's options. And one option is we could go from A directly to C all the way across. Now, remember, that's 10 miles, as it says right here. So the shoreline we're working with is 10 miles wide. And it's four miles to get from the shoreline to the island, at least straight line distance there. So we could do 10 here and four here. And what would that tell us? So it says for every dollar it costs to lay the cable underwater, it costs 60 cents to bury it on land. So it's cheaper to go on land, which we knew that. The other option is we could just go clear across. Don't even bother with the shoreline because, hey, we were taught in school the shortest distance between any two points is a straight line, right? But it's not distance that we're trying to minimize its cost. And when you have two different costs involved, that can change our answer drastically. So we're going to assume that it follows this. Form. We go from A to D. And then we go from D to B. So we need a variable. And since this is the side in question, we know that whole thing is 10. I need to call one of the sides X. I need to call the other side some, well, it'll be 10 minus X. So I'm going to do something a little unorthodox here. I'm actually going to call this side right here X and this side right here 10 minus X. And when we get to building the cost function, I'll explain why we do that because it actually turns out to be a little bit computationally nicer. So we seek to minimize the cost. Now the cost of this, and I'm gonna to try to find green here, this part here is 60 cents per mile when compared to this, which is a dollar per mile. So that basically says if it costs $100 per mile to lay the cable across the water, it's gonna cost $60 per mile to lay the cable on the shore. So. What's our cost function? Well, our cost function is 60 cents times the distance, which is 10 minus X, plus one times, oh, that distance. Now, that's a slanted distance where we know two sides of a right triangle and the side we seek is the hypotenuse. That's Pythagorean theorem right there. So we know that X squared plus four squared is equal to, I guess I'll call this distance right here D squared. Now you see why we used X for that side there. That's going to lead us to a much simpler looking expression. Otherwise, it would have been a 10 minus X squared plus 4 squared, and that would have been more complicated. So this means that D, the actual distance, is the square root of X squared plus 16. Do not call that X plus 4. That is not X plus 4. If you plugged in several values of x, you would not get the same thing as if you used x plus 4. So please don't ever make that error because some instructors might take off more points than the question is worth if you do that. It's a sensitive topic. So this means it's a dollar times the square root of x squared plus 16. Now, we know the story here. We want to take the derivative, set it equal to 0, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, but we still have more work to do here. We need to talk about this thing called domain. What values of x make sense in this problem? Well, the shoreline is 10 miles wide and x is part of that shoreline. So it makes sense to say that x has to be somewhere between 0 and 10. We're not going to go further left than a. We're not going to go further right than c. So x has to be between 0 and 10. So it feels like the way we're going to go about this is take the derivative, set it equal to 0, find the critical number, hoping there is one, and then use the original function to determine which one yields the minimum cost. And as simple as that. So let's just see what happens here. So I'm going to rewrite C of X so that we're ready to take its derivative. So I'm going to distribute the 0.6. And I'm going to write the square root as a power. Just like we're accustomed to for quite some time now. So remember, square root is one half power. And then we're going to take our derivative. 
So derivative of 6 is 0. Derivative of negative 0.6 is negative, or derivative of negative 0.6x is negative 0.6. And this is plus 1 half thing to the negative 1 half times the derivative of the thing. So I'm going to clean this up before I set it equal to 0. So we have negative 0 0.6, 1 half and 2 cross each other out. And we have an x multiplied and a negative 1 half power there. So I'm going to write that as x over the square root of x squared plus 16. And I want to find all the points where that's equal to 0. This thing is never undefined because the denominator is never 0. So we don't even have to worry about that. You know, you square something and add 16, you're never going to get 0. So I'm going to move the 0.6 to the other side to make everything positive. And then I'm going to square both sides because I don't want that square root in my equation. I want to deal with an equation I know how to solve, and that means eliminating radicals. So this means we have x squared over x squared plus 16 equals 0 0.36. Much easier to solve. We only have x squared terms. We can definitely handle this. I'm going to multiply both sides by x squared plus 16. And then multiply it out. So we have x squared equals 0.36 x squared plus 5.76. So try 0.36 x squared from both sides. Remember there's a 1. We'll divide both sides by 0.64. And this just happens to go in evenly. So look at that. x squared is equal to 9. Now ordinarily we would say plus or minus 3. But... We know we can't have negative 3 as an answer, so we're just going to use the positive square root, which is 3. So that's our critical number. Something is happening there. I would lay best that it's a minimum, but, you know, I'm not a betting man. So we'll just have to come back up here and see. So here's our x and here's our c of x. So let's plug in these endpoints and our critical number one by one to see what happens. So remember, our domain is 0 to 10, so I'm going to handle those first. When x is equal to 0... Using the cost function, which we ended up simplifying right here. So it looks like we have 6 minus 0 plus 16 to the half. And we know that 16 to the half is 4. 4 plus 6 is 10. So my cost is 10. $10 per, or 10, $10 per whatever unit we're using, hundreds, thousands, whatever. If x equals 10... We have 6 minus, now, 0.6 times 10 is 6. So that means that those two are going to cancel each other out. But then we have plus, now under the radic under the 1 half power, we have 10 squared, which is 100, plus 16. That's 116 to the 1 half, which is, if I'm recalling correctly, I have this computed out already, it's 10.77. So... Definitely not a contender for a minimum because 10 is already lower. So then along comes the 3. So we have 6 minus 0.6 times 3 plus 3 squared is 9 plus 16 is 25 to the 1 half. Point six, so 6 minus 0.6 times 3 is 4.2. 25 to the 1 half is 5. So this is 9.2, and would you look at that? There's where our minimum occurs. So where do we place where do we place that pivot point? Where do we start turning to go across the water? Three miles from the starting point. So we're talking about three miles this way. It'll be considerably shorter than the other part. And then we make our way across the water. And that's all there is to it. So a little bit more of a difficult example because of the derivative, but just uses our general concept. Construct your function. Find your derivative, find your critical numbers, compare and deduce what your minimum and maximum are. Thanks for watching.